Hi guys and welcome back to Trash Arts News where we bring you the latest in all things Trash Arts. Today we'll be revisiting a segment which we touched on in late 2018. It's Emily Priest Reviews and today she'll be taking a look at Trash Arts Killers Volume 1. Hello, it's Emily the Writer here again and today I'm going to be reviewing a personal favourite of mine from Trash Arts and that is the anthology Killers launched last year in 2018. You can find it on YouTube and it's just over an hour, about an hour and ten minutes. And in the description it is called A Collection of Twisted Horror Films from Independent Minds. And twisted is obviously the right word coming from Trash Arts, although this anthology is not as twisted as I have seen from the independent filmmakers. In this review I'm going to be talking about the anthology first as a whole and then I'm going to talk about each individual film, unpack it a little bit and say its pros and cons and my opinions of them. Overall, I really, really liked the anthology. I think it's very fast-paced, it's interesting, and it's very different from many anthologies I've seen. There's a lot of variation in it, and it's really refreshing to see loads of different creatives come together and tackle the same theme and explore it in different ways, which is really nice to see. I, I, I really take enjoyment in seeing how someone can take a theme and twist it in different ways, and this anthology is no exception. Unlike other anthologies from Trash Arts, there is no an underlining narrative or linking story. So it is simply a case of short, 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 back to front, all incredibly different. I personally like this because it's a bit more fast paced and you can pick it up and put it down. However, I can see why some people won't enjoy this because it can be seen as unengaging and as well doesn't have a sense of cohesion over the whole anthology. But nonetheless, it was still fun to watch, especially to horror film fans and those of fans of independent horror film artists. So picking apart each short, there are 10 in total and the first one is called Angel of Decay which is certainly interesting and definitely has the trash arts trademark like sort of feel to it. It follows a girl played by Jess Hunt who is obsessed by Ted Bundy the serial killer and does everything in a possible it, and does everything possible to try and reenact everything he done and that includes killing and necrophilia. And I, although this is very uncomfortable to, to kind of see, not that you see it graphically, um, I think it was needed and it's good that they, they didn't, they weren't scared to go so far. I like the unflinchingness behind the trash arts, trash arts films and I like that because if you're going to do something you might as well do it right and go the whole hog. As this short progressive you, progresses, you see Jess or the actress or the character basically lose her mind and realise that the glorification, the romanticism of Ted Bundy wasn't what she expected. She doesn't enjoy murder, she doesn't enjoy necrophilia. And eventually she kills one of her old friends and herself. It's really interesting, I like this, and it has an interesting poignancy to it and a message and an exploration underneath the grittiness and the twisted gore, necrophilia and shock factor. However, I do find that some bits are a bit clunky and cliche, especially in the dialogue. I think some of the writing could have had a little bit more tweaking. There's bits in it where she explains killing someone and she goes, oh, it feels like the knife was a part of me. And I've heard that before and it just didn't set right for me. There could have been so many other things that you could have said, different reactions, different responses that could have made me as the audience far more unsettled. ASMR Dolls is basically a short that is interspersed throughout the whole anthology of someone cutting up a lamb-shaped teddy bear or Barbie dolls and there's fake blood and although this is interesting to watch I don't understand ASMR, I don't get it, I don't take enjoyment from it but that's personally me however I do find that because it was so different from all the other shorts it kind of broke up the flow a bit and the tone and I feel like it wasn't appropriate for this anthology perhaps on its own I probably would have appreciated it a lot more um, because I do, although I don't like ASMR, I do like close-up things and I love watching things being destroyed. I don't know why, perhaps that makes me a little bit psychotic, but just seeing like a do Barbie doll gets torn apart, I don't know why, it gives me great joy. So I feel like if it was on its own, I would have enjoyed it a lot more, but because it was in this anthology and it didn't fit with the others, I was really put off by it. Court of Conscience... I don't know if it was meant to be funny, but I found it absolutely hysterical. It's basically this woman played by Suki Jones, who is a, uh, a preacher, and she's in public going 
all about how if you don't love God or Jesus, you're going to hell and, and you're going to die if you're a non-believer. And all these people sneer at her and snicker and eventually die one by one. And although it's not filmed the best and it's not acted the best, I still found it really fun. I found it quite tongue in cheek and jovial and I hope that's what the director was coming, was trying to do. Um, and I really liked it. It was fun. Like it wasn't great, but it was fun and it made me giggle. And I think with some anthologies like this, you need that to break up how the, the tone and the darkness of it. Over there is the next short and I didn't really understand what was going on. I pride myself in unpacking things and analysing stuff, however I just didn't get it. It starts with a guy talking to camera, quite low resolution, quite like rough and gritty and I, I, I quite liked that. And it starts off with him talking about like how we're selling ourselves and kind of questioning humanity and society and it almost had this sort of feel of like a spoken word piece. But then it kind of switches to shots of people walking past in cars and someone muttering the, in the background stage directions. And I didn't really understand what the point of that was. I'm, I try and wrap my brains for an explanation, but I really can't and I'm sorry. It just didn't work for me. So I liked it. It was fun and jovial, but there were some elements that kind of ruined it a little bit for me. Desire was my favourite short of the anthology and I thought it was directed superbly by Martina Madej. So I think like she deserves a round of applause for this because not only is the, the visual superb, the music, the editing, the directing, it is all stunning and it works so so well together. And it is an example of when someone knows their craft exceptionally well. But what I do like about it though is even though it tackles really explicit themes and has really extreme images of women tied up having sexual acts performed on them and being naked, like full frontal nudity, I think it's done in a way unlike other horror films. It's not dirty, it's not skanky, it's arty in a way and it's needed. It has a sense of substance and poignancy to it and I just think it's a, it's a key example of how sometimes you don't need dialogue to create something so beautiful in the filmmaking world. Um, but yeah, I think it was it was great how it all fitted together and the visuals are just, just really stunning. Um, and I think the contrast of wide shots and macro shots just really complemented each other well. And I just, yeah, overall, I thought it was just absolutely superb. So yeah, well done, Martina. The cool, as I mentioned earlier, I, I quite liked it and it had this, it, it, it adds a different dimension to the anthology. It deals with a woman who is dealing with her, her guilt of, of killing a girl by a hit and run. And throughout the whole short it's the phone going off and her dealing with this internal dialogue and this tension and her turmoil. And that phone adds a very interesting sense of tension, as it does in many films. What I like about it too is Suki Jones does an absolutely superb job as the woman when she's on her knees breaking down. That just really got to me. I was so engrossed at that point. And I think as well, as I said, it adds a different dimension. All before, it's very in-your-face horror. Someone kills each other. Like, it's guns, there's, like, throats being slit, there's gore, there's necrophilia. It's typical horror, but this one... It's not someone consciously being a murderer, it's someone who has done it by accident, it's manslaughter. And seeing that as a form of killing in this horror anthology was almost refreshing and it kind of broke up the tone a bit. And in a way, once again, added a sense of exploration and a sense of understanding to this idea of death and killing and, you know, where do you draw the lines between the two. So. Yeah, that was really interesting and yeah, brilliant acting on Suki's part. Finally, you have Attraction and Attraction I, I quite liked in the end. Originally I didn't. I thought to start with it was quite slow, the dialogue was clunky and it was written, it, it wasn't written well in my opinion. I personally thought it was a bit jarring to start with, it didn't really make much sense. Um, the characters are very subdued to start with, the conversation is very dry and stop and start. And then all of a sudden the male character, played by Chris Mills, is like up in the air going, oh I'm sorry I didn't get you that bracelet, I'm really sorry, and he's like panicking. But it's like so jarring because we haven't had that level of acting throughout the beginning of the film. Furthermore, this part where he's talking about the bracelet seems really important, but it's not. It, it isn't mentioned for the rest of the thing, so it begs the question, what's the point? 
However, as it develops, it gets really, really interesting and you find out that the main character has killed his girlfriend and what is he experiencing is actually in his head, it's not reality. And what, what is in his head and reality, dream um, and, and real life, fact and fiction is blurring together because of his psychosis. This is presented with lots of great editing, lots of um, cuts and the Rebecca Rolfe's character, the female, being very elusive and mysterious. I thought she played her quite well. She was casted quite well for the figure. However, I didn't think her acting kind of hit the mark, especially at the end. I'll talk more about that in a bit. What I really liked as well, how you had a lot of contrasting shots and a lot of repetition of different things. So one minute you have the roses sprawled about the floor all torn up and then the next minute they're fine in the sink. That contrast really hammers home this, po this idea of what is real, what is he really thinking. And what I really liked as well is before they have sex she whips out this letter she's like oh do you remember this and originally in that context it's very romantic it's i want to always be mine you're mine i don't want you to go anywhere things along that line however that's then ripped exactly verbatim for the last monologue where chris mills kills rebecca rolf and i thought that was brilliant i really really liked that and yeah once again that that clever use of uh narrative devices and filmmaking and cuts and repetition to, to really explore this film of psychosis. The last scene really worked well for me. I really liked the last scene where he kills her. Uh, I thought the acting on Chris Mills' part was superb. He plays anger very, very well. A little bit too mouthy at parts. He seems to kind of talk with gritted teeth when he acts a bit too much, but it's very believable. And when he does kill her, he does a very, very good expression afterwards. Um, where he doesn't break down, he doesn't get angry, he doesn't react, it's just numb. And he did that very well, he kind of stares down, slow breathing, and his eyes are filled with tears. And I thought that was very, very captivating, and the film kind of ends there. So that was Trash Arts Killers Volume 1, and you can catch this now online on YouTube or on Versus Media. Uh, before I sign off, I'm going to say a massive thank you to Emily for consistently contributing to this show. Thank you guys again for tuning in to Trash Arts News. For daily updates, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow.